Tanya Willis hit a wall in 2019. Her son had left home, so she was experiencing the empty nest syndrome. Her career of 30 years, which had previously been fulfilling and enjoyable, just didn't light her up anymore. She was uncomfortable in her body and just feeling dissatisfied and disconnected. And she also felt guilty for feeling this way. After all, her life really was good. But Tanya realised it was time to prioritise herself, to ask herself some serious questions and to let go of the old conditioned stories that were telling her what she could or couldn't do. Today she is firmly in the midst of creating her next chapter, moving through life in a newly healthy body and mindset, and unfolding a business that she loves, helping others uncover their own purpose, strengths, values and goals. Tanya's story shows us just how possible it is to change your own. I hope you enjoy this conversation. My name is Angela Raspis. I'm a business mentor, author, and self-worth educator, and you're listening to Your Next Chapter, a podcast about change and challenges, goals, and dreams, and the mix of strategy and self-worth it takes to step into the next version of you. Tanya Willis, it's so wonderful to have you here on the podcast. Now, we first, we've known each other from a wee while now from um, Salon Dinners, but then you came down to one of the Next Chapter retreats a few weeks ago, and you and I got into one of those lovely conversations where we truth told about what had been going on for us and some of the wonderful and impressive and inspirational changes that you'd made in your own life, hence why you were at a next chapter retreat. And I knew then and there that I needed to bring you onto this series of podcasts, this new season, which is all about change and all the different ways in which my guests have changed their worlds. And I'm really, really happy that you agreed to come on and and give us some insights. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Angela. It's really great to be here with you today. It is, it is, because we're going to have a wholehearted conversation. Uh, whenever, I've, whenever I've got somebody on the show and we're talking about next chapters, you know, stepping into the next version of you, they're never in a straight line, are they? They tend to go in all around in circles and sideways and up and downs and detours and all that sort of stuff. So we agreed that one of the core things we were going to talk about today was the I- idea of, of physical wellness, of how we could be inhabiting a body that allows allows us to turn up fully, whether that be in what we want to do in terms of physicality or how we want to show up for our clients and how we want to feel on the inside. So I'd really like to hand the mic over to you for more than a few moments here to find out about, you know, what was the previous chapter and what brought you to that decision of to it's time to make a change? Yeah, um, a huge year for me um, last year and this year. So I guess I think the first thing that happened was our son left home, right? So, you know, empty nesters, um, thinking that I sort of, I'm no longer needed, um, you know, so I'm feeling unhappy, feeling invisible, anxious, all all the things Mm -hmm. that you you think about um, and really not knowing who I sort of was anymore. And so I I don't know where that came from. Um, I think the thing that I felt as well at the time was that I felt like I had no right to feel that way, right? So um, I had a great partner, um, a wonderfully talented son who we did a pretty good job with, Mm -hmm. um, great home, successful career, but, you know, I couldn't sort of shake this feeling that something was missing. I certainly didn't feel healthy, so that that was a big thing. I loved my career, which is, you know, 30 years really of, of, of hard work. And I love the people that I was working with, but I was really feeling disconnected. Um, and that sort of started to take over more and more. So I guess at the end of 2019, I started to sort of ask myself, you know, the really hard questions that you do. So what was going on? Why am I feeling this way? Um, why am I not really loving what I'm doing anymore? Um, you know, what are my skills, my talents, the strengths, etc.? And my first answer that came back to me was really that I had to change my lifestyle. I I felt really flat. Um, My mobility was terrible. Um, My knees, my hips were aching. I mean, this was only 48 years old and I thought, no, this is is not possible. So, um, and of course, my weight was having a really big um, impact on my confidence um, and my mindset. So, that was where I was going to sort of put my focus. Um, Yeah, so... 
my hips, oh, yeah. my, my hips yeah. and, my, and my knees are in going out in sympathy of you right now. I can <laughs> certainly relate to that scenario. So do, do you feel like what you said just there, you know, the, the, the way that you were carrying, having an impact on your phys- on physically how you were feeling, but also on your confidence and your mindset, did you feel that, okay, here's a place after you'd asked those hard questions, here's a place that I can tangibly grab a hold of. And did you feel that that was going to open up new possibilities for you if you were feeling better about your your mobility and your confidence then? Yeah, I think so. I think though that I mean, I mean, I did, I've always struggled with my weight. So I was really quite worried that I think I got myself into this pattern of I'm never going to get the weight off. You know, I tried lots of different diets and um, you know, keto this and all of these sorts of different things. And um, I was going around and around in circles for a while and I'd, my doctor had given me tablets and that didn't, you know, I, that didn't work. And and I was thinking, oh, my God, I can't even get that right, you know. Um, so I started to sort of sit down and think about what exactly I needed to work on. And the steps really for me was to to focus on one thing at a time. So, you know, I'm I'm at home and on the weekend and we were doing pretty much nothing and, you know, scrolling mindlessly through Facebook as you do. And I no, sort of... I've never done that. <laughs> How could you make such an accusation? <laughs> as I do then. <laughs> um, yeah, and it was a mindless scroll, let me tell you. Um, and I, I found this sort of program that popped up to say, you know, that I can't even remember the name of it and it was an app and you, you know, you, you basically count your calories and there's no diet and there's no exercise, but there's some mindset stuff. So I sort of enrolled in that and went, okay, what's this look like? Is it it's going to be another diet, you know? Um, and it wasn't. And I, that, so I thought, okay, this looks all right. So I signed up and, and just did all the things that you do, you know, go and buy, I bought an Apple Watch, um, <laughs> you know, I, I got a gym membership and all of the things to make sure I had the tools that I needed. Um, I think that was a really important part of it. Um, I bought a bike at first, actually. <laughs> I have to tell you this story because it was a bit of a crazy story. So my first step was before before I found the program um, was to buy a bike, right? My, you know, my knees and my hips are not working properly. So a bike's a really good way to start some exercise without putting, you know, pressure on your joints. Um, so got on the bike um, and I thought I'll, I'll use the, um, the, the light rail and I'll take, I'll ride to the light rail and at each end. And so the first time I did that one, well, probably, not been, probably not the first time, but probably the second or third time I did that, I ended up falling over. <laughs> I lost my balance on the bike, um, which was really embarrassing, but it's sort of hilarious at the same time. It was in front of the peak crowd. So that was, that was fun. Um, and, you know, I felt like a cow had been, <laughs> been tipped over, to be honest. It was, it was terrible. Um, so, so that was the bike. Um, then I tried the bike again, and then I fainted on the on the light rail one day, and Whoa. it really it really actually um, sent a bit of a oh this is serious right something's going on here. So um, yeah, I think that's the catalyst really was to to get something going with my health and do it the right way. Yeah, that that perspective and hot. You- Thinking of the falling <laughs> off the bike, oh my goodness, I, I have a similar memory in my background. I'm not wonderfully coordinated. I tend to be a walker rather than a biker, but I do have a memory of, of falling off a bike. But you know, th- what I'm hearing is this realisation that this wasn't about, well, hey, I'm this, I need to be a different size. This was about, I want wellness, I really yeah. want wellness to be able to take me into my next chapter. And I know like one of the main reasons that I wanted to talk to you on the show is because we, well, I'm in a similar place to where you were and that real desire to be able to inhabit my body in such a way that it allows me to do whatever I feel like. Now, I don't mean I'm going to run out there and become a trapeze artist, but in terms of being able to participate fully in life and recognizing that um, at the moment, that's being taken away from me yeah. because of some of the choices, the, because of some of the, the things that I've been prioritizing other than my wellness. So Yeah, that's exactly right. And it is about the prioritization. It's really about, and that's the thing that I felt a bit guilty about. And there, were, there were three really key things that came up for me um, during the process. And, and you're right, it wasn't about 
you know, getting into a dress or getting to a dress to go to a wedding or like it had been in the past, you know. This was really about getting myself right for, for not just for my, my job but also for me, for as you say, for my next chapter. Yeah. But the three critical things that I came up against, and this was through some mindset stuff so um, that was in the program, and the first one was that I was, I was ashamed, right, of, of where I was um, and I did not believe that I could actually lose weight right my head was just I'm I can't do this I I it's it's too hard I can't do it I don't deserve to do it was the second part so when I hit that one and went oh what's coming up there I don't deserve to be fit and healthy and so I had to really focus on that and that that actually came about because I felt like I was being self-absorbed right Uh. so you take the priorities for yourself and I started to feel like this self-absorption that I'm going into right now is is not great. And I, I felt really really guilty about that. I felt really uncomfortable with it. Um, I don't know where it came from. <laughs> I'm still working through that, to be Ooh, honest. Oh, I think I think I've got a bit of a theory there because this is certainly <laughs> this is certainly making little like ding ding dings go off in my head. That whole idea about being self-centered. Mm. I think. If we come onto the side of work that I, you know, my new body of work that I'm putting alongside my mentoring, it's the self-worth piece. And as a part of that disconnection from self-worth is the conditioning, the societal conditioning that we have. And certainly as women, I know a bit of a bit of a feminist soapbox for a moment. (laughs) And I know, and I know it's changing, but overall, I mean, at 52, I've had years and years of formative um, conditioning that tells me that a good wife and a good mother and a good this and that puts other other people before me Mm. and so that feeling of being self-absorbed if I actually need to take the time to focus on my own wellness to prioritize stuff for me oh I reckon that would make a lot of a lot of alarm bells start going off for sure yeah, absolutely. And you can get on your feminist soapbox at any time if you need Angela. Always happy <laughs> for you to we do that. Sh- we shall share it. There is room here right beside me. <laughs> yeah, and you're right. It, it's, it, I, I didn't really think of it like that, actually. So that's that's a nice little aha, mo- aha moment for me. Mm-hmm. I think the, other, the third thing was that my relationship with food was absolutely terrible, right? So the good foods, the bad foods. When I have bad foods, I'm bad. Okay, so these were all the things that I sort of figured out. I, I, I sort of knew they were there, but I didn't really know how deep down they were. So, and I made some huge, huge progress through through that process. And 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 no food was bad, and no food is bad anymore for me. Right, so I I eat what I want. Um, and I, I, I count the calories. It's ridiculous, but I do. <laughs> and actually, I don't do it all the time now. Um, that was at the beginning. I had to do that quite a lot. And I count the calories and I exercise. And um, it's become a real lifestyle for me. It's the longest ever that I've ever kept weight off. Um, and I'm feeling really, really comfortable with where I am. And I love, I love exercising. And the only guilt I feel now is when the dog is actually passively aggressively looking at me in the hallway staring at me to say it's time for us to go for a walk and i'm i'm still not sure if it's motivating or bullying but it <laughs> a <works>. bullying dog <laughs> We have what we have one of those puppies in our house as well who sort of well, he gives you the the soulful look the doleful soulful look <laughs> when you when you put your sneakers on but they're not for him <laughs> yeah <laughs> so That's it's right. it's interesting here when we're talking about this as being like it's it's a life it's a lifestyle choice and I want to come back to what I think is a major stumbling block. And I can only speak for myself, but I'm going to do a little bit of projection here from other women I've spoken to as well. And it's not just about our ability to change our our bodies. It can be our ability to make changes in many areas of life. But it's that belief, I've tried it before and it didn't work, therefore, dot, 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 uh, what's the point in trying again? Do you feel that that's like uh, a story that we can get ourselves stuck in that applies all over the place? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the other part to my story is I I used to teach group fitness exercise years ago and um, I really knew that, I knew that if I started to get into this mindset of um, 
of really focusing on exercise, I had to be really careful because I could get really obsessed with it. Um, and so I was using that as an excuse as well, right? So, oh, I can't possibly do it because I'll just get obsessed and get stupid again and then, you know, and, and, uh, and it won't be sustainable and then I'll just put all the weight back on again. So, you know, that's, that was one of the stories that I had in my mind as well. So I had to really, I had to incorporate that into the program to make sure that I did not do that. Um, I wanted to make sure that whatever I did was sustainable Mm. and that I could keep it up. And rest is an important part of what I do. Um, I, and I, as I said before, I don't feel guilty anymore except for the dog. So, um, I, and I, it was, it's been a huge um, growth period for me um, with, with, with all of this. It's been, it's been wonderful. And um, 2020 for everyone was such a bad, difficult time. But for me, it was a real a sort of time where I could actually really focus on on myself um yeah I think it's a well I can relate to the stage as well and I'm sure a lot of listeners can my son has finished university my daughter has finished high school and is now at uni although I don't have an empty nest because they're still here (laughs) yeah but um, life has changed. Suddenly, there is this adjustment that needs to happen. I mean, a great example, simple example, I was running a mastermind call a couple of weeks ago and one of the women in the call said, oh, yes, I was going to do X, that thing, but it's the school holiday, so I realised it wasn't the best time to do it. And I went, oh, duh, it's, <laughs> it's the school holidays. It was literally the first time in like 25 years where I wasn't cognizant that it was the school holidays. Yeah. And that was like this little flag of life's changing. And my husband and I went away for, for the weekend, didn't even have to think apart from the fact, you know, don't forget to walk the dog and, and feed the cat, didn't have to take care of things in the same way. So, yeah, it's moving into this, this stage of life where we can actually start making a stand for ourselves. So where have you seen the, the spillover, the cascade effects that came from really prioritizing your own well-being? What happened next? Did you find that there was that cascade into other areas of life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's, I guess, my next chapter. So <laughs> um, I think what happened to me was, you know, the exercise, eating well, the fresh air, getting out into the sunlight and and, and able and actually taking action and it working <laughs> had yeah. motivated me, right? So it kept me going, um, not just in, in, in that part of my life, but it also started to make me see things a lot more clearly. Um, it was like a big sort of fog actually had lifted. Um, my brain started working properly again. I think with with the extra weight and and the, and the confidence issues, and it was probably hormonal as well. All of the things that we seem to have to work through, um, I started to think more positively. I started to be more confident, and it wasn't because of my body. It was because of my mind. I got my mind back, and um, I. I was able to start thinking about, okay, on my walks in particular, what am I going to do next? You know, I'm not, I'm not really happy um, in my work. Um, I, uh, as I said, I loved it, but, you know, but, and I, I couldn't quite work out what the but was. Mm. Um, and so I started, you know, and at work I was sort of second-guessing every decision um, and I felt really disconnected. Um, and I wasn't really getting the time to sort of consider the strategic things at work. We were so busy with COVID, like it was just crazy because I'm in the student. I was in the student wellbeing space, <laughs> so you can imagine. Um, and we were all in the same boat. And it was really about, well, what do I do next? Who do I want to be? Um, what do I, you know? There was something missing again, and it wasn't the weight this time. It was actually, I'm not doing enough I'm not doing what I want to do so I had to sort of really start to to work through that and I agonized over it it took me the whole year really um to sort of work out am I ready to leave 30 years you know (laughs) I've built this career um and, and and what do I do and I felt like my whole identity was wrapped up in in that one sector um, and thought, I, I'll never get another job, you know, I'm nearly 50, what happens to women when they leave work, when they're nearly 50, do they get other jobs, you know, all of those sorts of programmed thoughts and beliefs that were were revolving around in my head. 
But in the latter part of the year, I sort of um, signed up with a, a group leadership, um, <coughs> excuse me, coaching program, and it gave me the opportunity to really f- reflect on that. And with support of some women in that program and support of some really trusted colleagues, I was able to work through those really difficult decisions and and left work in February this year. So. Mm, that's, a, that's a huge next chapter. And I love it. I want to shine a light here for a moment on something that you said where you had these programmed thoughts and beliefs. So that was, and here's where I think some of the success of your ability to change has come. You'd already challenged previous programmed thoughts and beliefs around your own phys- physicality and wellness, mm. and you'd managed to move through those. So now you had great a great example, the power of example for self, that everything was figure outable and could be changed if you focus, if you prioritize yourself and gave yourself that space. So now we've got those next sort of wave of program thoughts and beliefs, you know, can I change after 30 years in an industry? You know, what happens to women of my age that <laughs> decide to go in a new direction? You know, it's going to be hard, except those, those things that we just think and believe without questioning. But I love how, especially on your walks, you gave yourself that space to question and you didn't hurry it. I mean, it, was no. a whole, it was a whole year. I mean, Well, I know my own experience is I have this tendency that when I have a thought, I want it to happen immediately. Like, <laughs> <laughs> can we do it like yesterday, please? And that's, sometimes that can be really useful. It can, you know, getting through procrastination can be really useful. But I think it's also important to know yourself and to give yourself that space and the recognition of the role that having people around you who were going through something similar, who almost like your community so that they could become mm. your belief buddies in a certain way. That seems to have really helped as well, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Um, some really trusted colleagues um, helped me a lot. Um, one was a training partner with me. We, we, we'd we meet at the gym and, and get together and she's been fantastic and and th- these colleagues um have just been a real support for me. Um, I don't know what I would have done without them, actually. I think last year would have just been terrible. Um, but, yeah, I'm feeling really confident about my next chapter. I am procrastinating and things are still going round and round in circles. <laughs> I'm a bit of an overthinker. Um, but I think the time to take for that decision was was really important for me. Um, my husband have been married to for quite a long time is incredibly supportive as well so you know all of those things started to all those pieces of the puzzle came together and yeah and so from what I understand is that this one of the things that it's really important to you as you're moving forward into advantage coaching and consulting which is the name of your new business is really helping others to clarify their purpose and their values and their goals. And I see this so often when it comes to a next chapter business. So often it's because we have been through some sort of catharsis or we've, you know, we've gone through experiences and we've learned some significant lessons and we've had significant growth edges that we've navigated ourselves. And now we have the opportunity to offer that sort of insight to our audiences. It doesn't mean everyone's going to want to hear us, but that's fine. We don't, we're not here to serve everyone. But do you feel that your own experiences has helped shape the type of work that you want to do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's part of I'm actually going through, like I'm working with clients at the moment and I'm, but I am sort of still working on what do I want my business to look like? And I keep going back and forth between, you know, leadership coaching, because that's my, that's my long-term, um, I guess, specialization. <laughs> I've done a lot of qualifications in it. I've got some experience in it uh, to life coaching, right? So, and I think that's been a really interesting sort of, um, uh, I guess, I don't know, thinking area for me, you know, decision that I'm trying to make. And I think I started to think about why am I trying to box myself into that decision? Because it's all about the niche. Everyone talks about the niche and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> and so I started to recognize, hang on a minute, that's actually not what the niche is about. The niche is about who I want to work with. I want to work with leaders, but I want to work with leaders in a holistic sense. And so the life part is really important. Um, for the leadership part. So I'm I'm working on that at the moment. And what do my programs look like? Because I want to do some programs, group programs and things like that. So I'm sort of working through what does that look like? What would a curriculum look like? 
um, for for that um, particular part of my business. So it's it's exciting, it's challenging, um, but it's really exciting. And I know that I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting closer. <laughs> I think that's the important part is that we can't expect to have it all, you know, look, there it is, beautifully designed on the page. I've got it all sorted. <laughs> it's such an evolution. I mean, I've been, I've been doing this work in the world since 2003. You know, when I first went into my own business after corporate world, it was not such a friendly place when you had little, little, little people um, back, you know, 22 years ago. And if you look at what I did then, compared to what I'm doing now, there are threads. It's not as though, you know, I was doing this and now I'm you know, running a circus, though sometimes it feels like it. But um, there is an evolution. There is a natural evolution. First of all, we need to follow what it is that, that is calling us, what, what it makes us curious, what energizes us, what captivates us, what engages us, and then start making those changes along the way. Isn't that one of the, the most beneficial things about being your own boss is that you can design it your way. Yeah, absolutely. That's been amazing. I've just I've just got to nut, nut it down now and start and start <laughs> that part. But that's yeah, it is good. And but you know what's really interesting when you say that though. Mm-hmm. And I was having a conversation with a with a friend the other day, and we were talking about how um, we stop ourselves because we think we've got to get it approved by someone. <laughs> It's like, I don't need to do that anymore. It's so exciting. Oh, my goodness. I'd never thought of it like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay. So we stop ourselves because we think we've got to get it approved by someone. Yeah. After being in a, in a corporate setting, because it's sort of, you have to, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a sort of a hierarchical trail. So, yeah. And it's, it, it was like, oh, wow. <laughs> I can't believe we, we didn't think about that before. Or well, maybe what we need to do is go down to Officeworks or, or another stationary supplier and get one of those uh, stamps, those rubber stamps with a big tick. Yeah. Just when you finish something, just bang, it's a big tick on it. <laughs> it's a great, that's not a bad idea. It's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not as silly as it sounds because no. the, the idea of building rituals around um, things to support you, like before I do a podcast episode, there is, you know, I've got the candle burning here, I've, I've done some background reading and investigation about the people I'm talking with and then there is just this couple of minutes of really breathing and 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 focusing and settling in and setting that intention for this to be just a wholehearted conversation that what we need to talk about comes out what what our listeners need to hear will happen boom and that's the sort of intention that I set. And so I might add to that and boom, there's my stamp. <laughs> we have permission to talk about whatever we've done, we'll please. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine, um, Tanya, imagine someone that's listening to us right now that's thinking, I'm in corporate, I wouldn't mind leaving, but I don't know if I can or I've, I'm, I feel not right in my body. You know, it's not, it doesn't feel comfortable, but uh, I've tried so many times, you know, I can't make it happen. What do you think that you could say to them to help them just jump over or even just ease themselves over that first hurdle in the mind? Yeah, it's a great question. And um, and I know we're probably not in the book section bit, bit yet, but I did read some books <laughs> and that helped me, um, which was um, Reboot and Pivot. Um, and they they actually helped me to to really think about that. So the most important thing I can think about here is to really sit and reflect on who you are um, and and what your skills are, um, what your strengths are and, and the ones that you use the most but not necessarily the ones that you're using now. It could be something that you really, really love doing that you're not doing um, and to sit down and really think about all of those different things and um, and have that time to reflect. I, I found that, from my own point of view, really important. Um, the other part to that, of course, is y- you know your 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 purpose. Um, so, trying to work through what that looks like, and and I, I have taken a long time to get there um, because it, it's a lot of work, um, but it's important work. So you're f- reflecting on who you are first, and then reflecting on who you want to be. So. Um, and you just have to really do that work. I, I think if you try to do it without doing that work, you can end up floundering. That's what I've done in the past. Mm. <clears throat> and, and yeah. You made me think before, you know, we often get asked, who do you want to be or what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm. And now it's more oh. of a case of now that I'm growing up, who do I want to be? So it's like it's reversed. Yeah, 
Exactly. Like, yeah, it's really- and I never knew who I wanted to be when I grew up. So that, <laughs> that's probably why it's <laughs> taken me a longer, you know, a lot of a lot of time. And so if you were to describe that now, who do you want to be? <coughs> Excuse me. Um who do I want to be? Um, oh gosh. I just uh I want to be uh, purposeful. I want to make a difference, right? Um with people and and want to be able to make a difference in their lives and be able to to help people find who they are, find their gifts. But ideally, I I just I want to be me. Like I just want to be comfortable in my own skin, <clears throat> enjoy time with my family, with my partner, um, and just you know get on with it. <laughs> Stop this overthinking that keeps going around in my head all the time. <laughs> There's the, I mean, I think that's the beauty of the choice that you've made now. That that opportunity is very much there to do exactly that. We've got, I've got this this vision of you, of you know, balancing these two sides. And balance doesn't mean that you're perfectly still, because that's what you need to be perfectly balanced. Balance to me is more of a blend, and that ability to to fulfil that desire to help other people discover their own gifts and their own strengths and how to use it. And it's a work in progress. There is no finish date, like tick, there you go, done. Okay, just carry on exactly as you are. <laughs> Nothing's yeah, going to change between now. It's such a journey and, and there's twists and there's turns and there's, and there's detours and all sorts of things that are going on. But you've, you've, it feels to me as though the recipe is, is coming to the surface, that opportunity for you to spend that time because you're aware of your family and your partner and, and who you are and your own wellness is just as important as the work that you're doing in the world and you're not going to let one overcome the other anymore. Yeah, no, and I think we talk about balance and it's so easy to get yourself tied up in knots about balance, right, yeah. balancing work life. What does that mean? Like, <laughs> um, and I think we, we all get so tied up on what that actually means. We don't actually think about what it is we actually really want to do and and the purpose that we actually out the why you know that everybody's talking about right now and and what gets us out of bed in the morning um and I think once you start to really sit with that you can start to then work out okay to do that these are the actions that I need to take Mm. and giving yourself that space that you spoke about earlier and committing to that reflection actually yeah. asking yourself the questions and not allowing yourself to go, oh, I'll think about that later, but yeah. to actually invest the time in asking yourself those questions. Yeah, there's confidence in the clarity, right? Oh, my goodness, yes. Once you, once you have some of that sort of that clarity, um, well, I did. I started to feel more confident in, in where I was going um, and just focused on those steps, broke through some of the self-doubt that was going around in my head, the fear of failure, and just, huge, yeah, it's yeah. huge for all of us. Yep, yeah. Actually, that's a that's a good question. As we're coming around to the end of the com- of this conversation, that that fear of failure, that self doubt, I'm yet to speak to a person on a podcast in my business in life who doesn't entertain those fears of it not working or that feeling of doubt. But you haven't let it stop you. You haven't let it stop you from making a significant change in more than one area of your life. What no. was what what made that possible for you? How did you deal with that doubt and still do, I assume? I have always um, had self doubt. Like I think we, as you said, a lot of people do, and I think it's I think it's something that we just all have, right? It's an inherent thing that's there. Absolutely. Um, and I and, and again, we we can fight it, but I think every time you go with it and you start to go, okay, what what is what is happening? Why am I feeling that? And that's to actually question yourself and ask those really deep questions as to what it is that's creating the self doubt. Then you can work through it again. The clarity, right? The clarity of that builds the confidence to take the steps. Everything I've ever done has I've always had self doubt. Often I just sign up. You know the program I signed up to. I did that. I thought, right, I'm going to sign up for six months. That's going to at least it's pay. You know I've paid some money. Um, and I've just now got to take those steps. And then you just, you, you take action. Um, and, and the other thing that I think is really important with anything where you have self-doubt, for me, um, not, not necessarily for other people, but for me, 
is to take action one step at a time. So, for example, when I was going through my weight loss, I can get overwhelmed. We all get overwhelmed and that's when things start to, you know, go a little bit crazy. And so I thought, oh, what am I going to do here? So I started to focus on just the exercise piece, right? Got the exercise piece right. Then I thought, okay, I'm going to start working on um, the, the food and getting the food right which, you know, which is calories. But before that, I was just focusing on organi- getting, my, getting my exercise right and my exercise routine right so that it became normal. I was eating well, but I wasn't specific. I was still eating probably a lot of, you know, things, are um, not bad foods. We don't call them bad foods, but more than what I should have. Um, and so I, I just had to focus on one step at a time, and, I, and that helped a lot. That is, that is wisdom. <laughs> Action is the antidote to self-doubt, but don't try and do all the things. I think everyone can get overwhelmed, especially when you're starting your next chapter. If if that looks like a business, there's so many moving parts. Whether that next chapter looks like getting a handle on your own health and wellness, there's so many possibilities and so many different perspectives and ways of approaching it. So make a choice and then just take it one step at a time. Exactly. And you said that so yeah. well, Angela. <laughs> you summed it all up so beautifully. I just reflected back what I've been hearing from you, darling. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing this insight. I think one of the most important things, Tanya, that you have been so real and honest about today is that none of us are finished masterpieces. We're all works in progress. We're all works in progress. And that reflection piece, taking the time to give yourself that space to think and to ponder and to reflect and to ask the questions and not to shy away from them. And then to just take another step and another step. I really admire watching the progress that you're making. And without a doubt, having those experiences are now going to be turned into gold for the people who choose to work from you, with you with that holistic perspective that you have. So we spoke um, before we hit record about a song that you find that can uplift and inspire you as you're moving into and through this next chapter. And if you can revisit those books just briefly for us so we can add them to the recommendations. Yeah, so the book says Reboot by Jerry Colonna. So that's called Leadership and the Art of Growing Up. <laughs> it's, <a great> book. <laughs> it's so good. Um, that was probably the first one that I read. And then Pivot by Jenny Blake. So Pivot is the only move that matters is your next one by Jenny Blake. So both really great books to read. I really recommend them. And a song, I mean, books are hard enough. Songs are even worse. I'm very <laughs> motivated by music. I listen to a lot of music um, when I walk. Um, in fact, that's all I do when I walk or when I do exercise. But I think one of my favourite songs is actually not one of my walking tracks because otherwise it would be really beady and just too crazy. But one of my favourite songs is Dream by Priscilla Ahn. Um, it's just a very beautiful um, song. The lyrics are incredible and her voice is just absolutely gorgeous. But the song reminds me of my childhood. I was a, very much a dreamer and a bit of a loner, probably still am, um, but, you know, I have grown up. Um, but to me, it's a song of the journey of life. It's of growing up and the struggles to find your place in the world. And it sort of reminds me to remember that life is for living and to make the most of the time we have. Oh, um, you know, the first thing I'm going to be doing after we're finished speaking is I'm going off to Spotify to have a listen to that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it makes me cry though. <laughs> so it's not uplifting in that sort of really motivational way like, you know, Katy Perry, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's It sounds as though it fits beautifully with your approach, which is reflection and self-compassion before you take action. So yeah. it sounds like it's the perfect selection. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again, darling. It's been an absolute pleasure to get a little bit of that, that window into your experience. And I know without a doubt that women listening to our conversation will be able to relate to what we're talking about and will get that encouragement to take the next step, which is what this has all been about. So thanks again for your time. Thanks so much, Angela. You're most welcome. And yes, my lovely listener. Can you hear, did you hear the honesty and the openness in the way in which Tanya shared with us? None of us have got it all worked out. We haven't got all the balls in a row. We haven't got all the boxes ticked. Unless, of course, you go down to Officeworks and get one of those stamps that we talked about. But it's the next step and then the next step 
and then the next step. And before you know it, you are fully enveloped into your next chapter, doing things, accomplishing things, making things happen that at the beginning you questioned were even possible. It is possible for every one of us if we do take it slowly and surely with our eye always firmly on that vision that we've got for the change that we want to make in ourselves and in the world. So I hope you find some encouragement here to take that first step into your next chapter. And until we talk again, take very good care.